Edmonton, Alberta. A proud city with a wild heart. It has played stage to some of sport's greatest stories. Some argue that the seed of triathlon in Canada was planted firmly in Edmonton soil some 20 years ago. So relaxed and composed this morning, he was signing autographs, laughing and talking to the spectators, and he is going to win the gold medal. Canada, Simon Whitfield, gold. On the 23rd and 24th of July, History will be made again as the PTO launches the first stage of the 2022 PTO Tour and Triathlon comes home to Edmonton. And with the spectacle come the biggest names in the sport. The new, the hungry. It's getting <laughs> serious. Daniel Beckerdard closing the gap quickly. Get ready. The season. And absolutely fascinating, guys. The dangerous. By the impossible. Really pushing that limit. You got this. Go. Keep the pace high all day long. And those that threaten to change the game forever. The world's ultimate athletes will pit themselves against each other in a new distance that unites endurance athletes of all disciplines. Amongst those racing are Canada's own Lionel Sanders and Paula Finley. Looking to upset any competitors. Aiming to steal the win in Edmonton. While Sanders is revered for his no limits attitude. I'd love to come racing and go head to head, side by side. Some doubt his potential. A bunch of bullshit comes out that I'm a effing coward and question who or what he's really racing when pushing himself beyond the human limit. Put these to bed in two seconds. You can trust me on that. Better fucking go, Lionel! He is absolutely rolling through a pack of men. Love it! When that gun goes, this is life and death. I don't want any friendship with you whatsoever. I have guys like Lionel Sanders saying, look, I'm gonna either beat Jan or go home on a stretcher. Finley, an unpredictable hometown hero. I've done this a hundred times and I'll do a hundred more. Depending on the balance of body and mind. There's a definite hometown advantage. Come race day, she can either decimate the field. There's a reason a lot of good triathletes came out of the city. <laughs> I've proven to myself in Daytona, Awful, tragically short. It's changed the game in triathlon a lot. Well, it's a huge race. I think no matter where the race would be, everyone's going to be trying to win it. You're measuring yourself against the absolute best in the world. Nobody's unbeatable. <laughs> Impossible to predict. It's an exciting opportunity. But I'm still one of the best in the world representing. On the 23rd and 24th of July, at the PTO Edmonton Open, all questions will be answered. Good morning. <laughs> you kept him outside all night? No. <laughs> I just went out to the bathroom.
Eric That's does the dishes. Paula makes a fantastic meal the night before I do the dishes. I usually wake up around six because of the sun coming up early. Okay. <laughs> we don't set an alarm, Eric and I. We think that it's good just to get as much sleep as you need and we have all day to train, so there's no need to get up at five and go swimming or anything. Same breakfast every day, peanut butter and toast. Two pieces of toast. This is the kind of like with peanut butter. That's it. Actually, and coffee. Eric makes me coffee. Not just any coffee though. It's the most beautiful cappuccino that you'll ever see. Wow. As a person, Paula is super kind, sometimes overly generous, I would say. She's very, very serious about a lot of things that she wants to do just a certain way. And I think that really plays really well into her as an athlete. She's very methodical about training and preparation. Yeah. I'll start my ride whenever you're done your run. There's no rush because Heather's not coming now. So even if we start at 9.30 or 10 or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Usually when I start training, I'm like, wow, I should have done like some foam rolling or some stretching before, but that's Instagram. Reality, no, <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> In the background of all this, Flynn's bringing us ducks, long dogs <laughs> to throw because He's ready for the day. Very excited for his first activity. Load up. <laughs> so the dog park is about a kilometer away, but for maximum efficiency, we drive over there. He was in Oceanside on the course, which I liked. It was so funny. I don't think he even recognized me while I was racing. Good boy. Leave it. But he's my... Emotional support uh, animal, for real. <laughs> I like having him around, makes it feel more normal, you know? It's like everyday life, which I think is good around a race sometimes, just like helps you chill a bit. Hi. Hi. Okay, so you designed the course, which is kind of a unique situation since I will be racing in Edmonton, and to have like a close family member so involved with the race, I feel like is a bit of an advantage. So what would be cool is if you could walk me through the course a little bit. She was challenging. She was, she was very headstrong. She knew what she wanted. Um, very hard to, to discipline um, and ran the family, really. She, she did. Bloody minded. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Try to showcase Edmonton. She's as competitive as she ever was, still. By far the most competitive child. I have seen Paula's stubbornness and fieriness. That side of Paula I've got to know quite well over the years, so I know she's a very driven uh, young lady. Um, does it go across High Level Bridge? Are we coming out of the water each lap? They probably would have hoped that I would be a doctor by now. <laughs> with maybe husband and kids and living in Edmonton, which is a completely different path. People threw that at her as something that she wanted to do. You're gonna be a doctor. By the time she got to university, she didn't love school anymore. No, I think she, she loves competing. She would have been 18. She's built different. I love seeing that side of her, willing to dig deep and gut it out. Then you could see her really shine through when she was on the track. So when I was younger, I watched the World Cup in Edmonton at Horlack Park in the same venue. Yeah. And when I was watching people like Simon Whitfield and Siri Lindley, that kind of inspired me to get into the sport ultimately. So I think it's really cool that the course kind of replicates that same thing now where they go up Broat Road. And we used to stand right outside our house and watch them do the U-turn at the top of Broat Road. As an 11-year-old girl, she watched Canadian triathlete superstars Simon Whitfield and Siri Lindley compete in her hometown. Little did she know how significant and intertwined their journeys would become. So I remember watching as an 11-year-old the World Cup race with Siri Lindley and Simon Whitfield, and this was before I was even a swimmer, or even in the sport at all. I remember when Simon Whitfield won here in 2001, maybe. He was on the huge front page of the paper 
and I got his autograph on the front page of the paper and hung it in my bedroom. It wouldn't be long after that she would begin to compete. And with those early years came a rare and almost unprecedented string of successes. This is the moment. It's the cold, it's the flames, it's the In the past, I've done really well coming up under the radar. Up on the toe, she is really starting to move this away right now. Paula moment. Finley, her first ever World Championship Series moment. race, she looks over her shoulder. She is going to steal this race. Then I don't know how I did it. Canada's Paula Finley, an unbelievable run if she goes. I don't think even back in 2011 that she really understood how good she was and how big of a deal it was to just go like boom, 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 win WTS races. Anyone stop Paula? It's a state that you only get into a handful of times in your career, I think, when you're that prepared and that fit and fast. Finley wins in London. When she won her first WTS race in London, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. It was pretty magical. I remember really vividly listening to everyone's breathing around me and thinking that I was more in control than them. <laughs> I don't know if that was the truth or not. I was super fit and super fast. Quickly, it is down to just a small group of five. Yeah, I'm running with five people, but I think I'm not working as hard as them. <laughs> when she got in the news, she was adored. Wow, that was a really hard race. It's amazing, most best swim of my life. That just kind of catapulted me to being a little bit in the spotlight and set me up for a good string of success. I had to buy a new pair of bike shoes, and a young lady saw my name and she said, are you Paula's dad? So <laughs> I love Paula. <laughs> Never met her. She won three or four WTSs all in a row. Was kind of in the conversation for being Olympic champion and, and world champion. When you're at the top, you're highly under a microscope. You know, there was a lot of winning. When you're at the top, it's impossible to stay at the top. It wasn't going to last forever. Finley, 21 years of age, and she wins here. Max, what are you going to Is it like a... A beer. It's like a Does hybrid. Care what yeah. you find? Uh, the Jasper. Yep, dig in, Susan. No, it was going to be a, a roller coaster ride, and it was. Um, I don't know, it's hard to talk about, like, the Olympics and just things that happened so long ago especially emotional things like that. I honestly don't even remember some of the facts and details from it as much as they might. We were in the stands. It was a beautiful day. We had a huge army of fans that had come from here to watch her. It was really cool that they came. We knew London. She was dealing with some injuries. We weren't sure about her form. But uh, it was it was, um, it was fantastic to see her participating, but it was also hard to watch. Everybody thought she was going to win. Everybody. When you walked into the Canada House, there was a picture of, of her that was, I don't know, it was bigger she than this table. She had a great on the record wall. Le leading up to the games. Again, I had a premonition, but didn't know how bad things were. A lot of the time, I, I mean, throughout my life, I have silenced the bad kind of injury where you know it's not good, but. You're in a race, you're doing decently, you want to finish, but you know it's going to make you worse. She, for the longest time, wouldn't tell me if she was hurt or not well. You'd I'd sense like it, she, but... Yes, I could sense it, and she, but she wouldn't call and say, you know, things aren't great. And then it's just waiting for the phone call at the end of the race. The thing about, like, if you go out and you race 12 times a year, you're constantly flirting with disaster of injury. It was tough. It was just really tough. And, uh, and then during the race, the wheels fell off. She almost didn't finish that race. I mean, she stopped dead last. And she was, you know, just crying as she passed the stand and then stopped. She looked at me. Mm -hmm. Desperate. Yeah. You know, it was really, yeah. it, was, it was a heartbreaker. The headlines after were, no iron, no gold. Mm -hmm. She was quite anemic during the race, unbeknownst to everyone. I think my disappointment in 2012 was so soon after having really good success in 2011. So there was only 10 months separating when I was ranked first in the world and then I got injured and went and had the Olympics. It was a disaster. 
But in my mind, I was still the athlete that I was in 2011. So it wasn't like 10 years had passed and I was a, a different person. I was still, I believed, had the ability to return to be the best in the world. Looking back, it affected me more than I thought it did at the time. But um, the, the success I had had was so fresh in my mind and I felt like the same person. So it wasn't like I had to rebuild myself or anything. That was what I was thinking anyway. When you, when you stress your body that hard, it takes several years of, of just resting and taking a, a step back. And in the meantime, everybody's wondering and asking where you are. Finley spent almost a decade with inconsistent results. Working her way back to elite level competition at the PTO 2020 Championship in Daytona, all eyes were on her. The best women triathletes in the world. I feel like people think I could always be a threat if I'm fit and healthy, but the chances of me being fit and healthy are very low. <laughs> she looks calm, she looks confident. There's some really strong women chasing the cannon fired, and now jockeying for position. It was such a new kind of distance to me. I hadn't raced in over a year. Finley continuing to look so strong. It was such an emotional, uncertain time. It was just a different feeling of not having the confidence or the experience. Paula Finley, first to put the shoes on. I wasn't sure I could hold the pace I was running for the whole time. It's just taking its toll. It was like kind of a fear of blowing up. Yeah! Now she takes the lead. What an incredible race. Paula Finley for Canada, the 2020 PTO champion. It was cool that I was that far ahead in a race with all the best people in it. Having gone through all those years of, of not having a, a really big result, that was, I think if you asked her, that'd probably be one of the, if not the most meaningful win of her career. I got a funny little saying sent to me from Eric that he found. It was sort of an, en an engraving on a little plaque and it said, she's not delicate like a flower, <laughs> she's delicate like a bomb. She knows she's, she just can flip and be a bomb. I think what sets her apart from the rest of the women's field is her, her past. She has had this crazy experience, which no one else has had, where she came out in her first couple years of doing the sport and was instantly on the world stage in the conversation for being world champion, for being Olympic champion, and then basically just had it all ripped away. And has finally worked back on the top step of the world stage. Paula Findlay, well, we've all seen what she can do. When she's on, it's very, very hard to stop her. She can find that consistency and, and, and find the shape for the day. What do I know about Paula Finley? Very well-rounded athlete. One of the best to do it across all distances. She's not intimidated in any way, I can tell you that for certain. Basically, at any race, I can say I've beat all of these people at least once. Yeah, I definitely assess the people I'm racing against and think about races where I've raced them before. Other athletes, people I have heard have called her unpredictable and dangerous. I would imagine that that would create a certain amount of fear in a competitor. The times when she is just on another level like Daytona is when she's had three or four months of, of solid running. That's all it takes. With her, the key is just getting to the important start lines, healthy, happy, and fit. You know, it's a lot of fun when you're fit and injury-free, and but it's heartbreaking when she gets hurt and out of commission for a while. Even when the gun goes off, I'm still a little bit nervous. But at that point, you're just thinking about what's happening. The nerves change as soon as the race starts, for sure. The pressure for her is that she has to make it to the start line. She can't get injured because we've played that game a few times, and she's got to get there. 
A lot of people at the top are. The second that winning seems like definitely not going to happen, and second is on lock, it's very easy to slip to fifth. Because it's a home race, because so many of the people that she grew up with still live in Edmonton, and they have all been on this emotional roller coaster with her. Of course, she would love to win at hometown. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. If I'm really fit and feeling good, I can beat any of them. I mean, I'm from Edmonton, so that adds a little bit more level of, of pressure. Lionel can take some of the pressure off me because he's Canadian too. <laughs>